All right, folks, how's it going? So my mission for tonight is to install a AV mod in my old Atari 2600 here. Uh, yeah, I've owned this Atari for about four years, three or four years, thereabouts. And uh, it actually puts out a really nice RF signal. So I have been reluctant to actually do this mod on this. Uh, just because it puts out such a, a steady and nice clear RF signal. But with uh, a lot of modern TVs, they don't even come with an RF socket. So really I'm doing this to sort of future proof the console. Uh, to do this mod you do actually have to remove the RF box uh, from out of the, the Atari itself. So when you do this you can no longer you know, uh, tune it in via RF. Um, I'll show you around the back here so the, as you can see the, the RF lead still attached here. It's about uh, 20 feet long, really, really long. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's my plan anyway. So the uh, little board here, if I can, hopefully the camera will focus. This is the, the little board I have to solder in. I bought this off eBay. If you are looking for one of these, if you search for uh, Atari 2600 Composite, uh, you should find these. Uh, the guy lives in Turkey who sells these and basically this little board will do all Ataris whether it be you know a 6 switch, a 4 switch, a junior, a PAL version, a NTSC version this one board does them all. It even actually does the Atari uh, 7800 so there's uh, five wires, is it five? There's five wires down one side there, they're all labelled. And then just the two wires on the other side. And I have a PDF document, which the eBay auction actually links to. Uh, yeah, PDA, PDF with the instructions on how to do this. Um, this is uh, a PAL unit that I'm modifying here. Um, the uh, kit comes with the two RCA jacks as well, which will be getting uh, put into the back of it here somewhere. I don't know where they're going to go yet. I'll find out once you open it. But they'll be going either here or over here somewhere. So yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. So let's get started. All right. Well, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is take this thing apart. <coughs> Not too taxing. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six or eight screws. There's two screws there, which I don't know if they need to come out or not. So go ahead and uh, take these star head screws out. I'll leave those two in for now. I'm not sure if they need to come out just yet. <coughs> I have had this apart before. Uh, when I first got it, I took it apart and cleaned 30 years of dust out of it and it's full of dust again after two years or three years since the last time I had taken it apart. Now this has been sitting uh, in my loft unused for a while because I uh, use a Atari Junior as my main console but I'm going to be switching it out with this. So this is the, the RF box here. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. Hopefully the camera will stay focused. This is your RF box here. And the RF lead just plugs into the side of it there. So we 
you can do away with that. I'll just keep that lead that will come in handy for something else. <coughs> so those are the other two screws must hold this whole unit then. You can see the the dust that it has built up inside that. Absolutely unbelievable. For all the amount of time. Uh, there was probably less dust in it when I opened it in the first place. Uh, there we go. So we'll go take out these other two screws here. Um, you need to take these little uh, black pads off the buttons because now when we turn it upside down these will all fall off. Uh, these go quite brittle as well with age so if you're doing this just be quite careful with them. They're actually a dust shield to stop the the buttons. You can see that one split. Um, the buttons, you know, stops the buttons getting full of dirt. So we'll put them to the side. We'll take these two screws out that's holding everything in the, the case. Okay. And that should all just lift out, hopefully, yep. So yeah, there's quite a bit of dust in there. So this is your main unit here, your main uh, sort of motherboard. And I'm find somewhere to put this case out of my way. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, we need to separate this part from this part. And then uh, as far as I can remember, the mods we're doing are actually inside this box here so yeah we could take a couple more screws here at the sides um, there's, there's one here and one on this side as well and that seems to be all that's attaching that apart from the the wire plugs at the top here okay. Plug this cable from the top here, just like that. Nothing too difficult there. So I think, uh, uh, like I said, we need to take this part uh, part off. But I think there's uh, part of the mod goes in here, and part of the mod goes in here. So it's uh, time to start uh, checking my instructions here and seeing exactly what I'm doing before I strip anything more apart here. Alright, so I've checked my instructions and there's a slight difference in the RF box that it's showing and the RF box it's fitted to mine. Uh, but there's still uh, the same amount of pins passing through the board. So I need to uh, unsolder this RF box here. There's four large legs, one, two, three and four, which sort of hold the box down. And then if you can see here, there's five pins along here, uh, three of which we need to solder to as part of this mod. Uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and heat up a solder and iron, uh, get this RF box removed and see where we go from there. Alright, I'm zoomed right in here. Uh, this is the the back of the RF box here. So I need to take out these uh, four big ground legs basically first. So for this I'm going to use uh, my solder shutter which a bit like myself is overworked and underpaid and it doesn't work best anymore. So uh, I'll try my best with it here. I'll just make sure you're still in shot there. Suck as much solder away there as possible. Okay, 
I should be able to get here. That should be enough to get the legs loose, hopefully. Alright, so I managed to get the RF box off. Here it is. I did have one problem though. I've managed to uh, lift one of the pads off as well. Uh, that's what happens working on 30 year old components. Um, if you can see there, uh, pad number three gets on the point with here. Uh, this is pad one, pad two, pad three has come right off the board and it's actually broken the trace. Uh, it leads up to this point here so I should be able to uh, solder my wire in here instead of on the pad which is no longer there. Um, yes because there's no, there's no component between here and here. So I'll be able to just uh, solder the wire in here instead. So that's one thing to be careful of. Uh, working on old electronics like this. The uh, things are old and brittle. So that just come right off with the soldering iron. As I tried to uh, apply some heat to that and put the, suck, the solder sucker on it. And when I lifted the soldering iron away, that pad just came with it. But it's not the end of the world, like I said, I'll be able to put the wire in here instead. So yeah, just uh, you need to be careful. And sometimes things don't go according to plan. Hopefully it's not the end of the world. There's that, uh, that pad there. If you can see it on the end of my finger there. <coughs> so we'll throw that away. <laughs> No need for it now. So I need to solder the wires into uh, three of these five points. Uh, point one is the outermost, which is ground. I'll bring it a bit closer. So this one is ground. The second one is not used. The third one, which I have lifted off, is labelled as VCC. Don't know what that means. And then. Uh, point four is video in. So we need to get uh, our corresponding wires from our little mod board here, which are all uh, labelled. So AN, audio in, audio out, video in, video out, ground, and then on the other side, ground in and VCC. So it's all well labelled. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult to uh, figure out what I'm doing here. We shall uh, unravel the wires on this mod board here and get it ready for soldering in. I'm going to mount the little board uh, right where the RF uh, socket was and to do that I'm going to use uh, a sticky pad. These I get from my local uh, car suppliers or car parts place. They're actually for sticking number plates on a car and they're extremely sticky and they're perfect for doing mods. So once you have the back peeled off you can just stick your uh, little mod board down on them. And that's going absolutely nowhere. I can easily pick the whole board up with that. So I'm going to need to trim these wires because they're extremely long and I shall figure that out now uh, which wires is going where and how long I need to make it. So the wire labelled uh, VCC is the one that the pad came off on me so I've brought the wire around and I've actually passed it through the hole and then it's coming up if I can get the end shot there. If you can just see the orange wires coming up and I'm just about to solder it onto this pad here. If this mod doesn't work, <laughs> this will be why it doesn't work uh, because this is getting soldered into a different place but it should be okay. It's like I said there's no components between here and where it's meant to go. So that's it soldered in. Sorry about the 
a bad shot there. Uh, if the camera would focus, okay, that's it. Soldered on that point there. So next is our ground. Uh, ground in. Ground in comes round and it goes to the very outside one here. So we're going to snip that wire, pass it through the hole and solder it from the other side there. Alright, that's the ground. <coughs> So the next one is the fourth pin along, which is our video in, if I remember right. Alright, that's our uh, three wires to this part of the board soldered in. Uh, it's video in, uh, ground in and VCC which I don't know what it means. Uh, the next one is our audio in which needs to come from uh, inside this box. That's where our audio feed comes from. And then the remaining three wires go to the RC Ajax at the back of the uh, Atari which I haven't fitted yet. So we'll go ahead and have a look see where the audio feed comes from. <coughs> 